successfully raising one clutch, Dawn and Enno are ready for another adventure. They both worked hard to guard and protect each other and their clutch, waiting anxiously to see if their two eggs would hatch. And thankfully, they did. Two female Allosaurus. One was called Yaro and her sister Scallop. The two hatchlings are extremely curious about their surroundings. They make sure to quickly keep up with their father, who is making his way down to the water, something they had never seen before. Yaro bravely jumps in, not yet aware of the dangers of drowning, but thankfully her parents are both behind, and Enno carefully uses his large head to push her back on shore. Scallop watches carefully, making sure to learn not only from her own experiences, but her sister's. Even with her little swim, Yaro isn't scared of the water. She cautiously swims around and plays with it while her parents drink. Enno lets out a low bellow to tell everyone it's time to move, but Yaro decides that the small reeds around the pond are much more interesting. Letting out small playful chirps before finally admitting defeat and running back over to her mother. Yaro seemed to be the slowest of the group, Dawn made sure to keep an eye on her constantly. Yaro, on the other hand, not making it very easy for her mother. She loved to splash in the water and even get startled by a stick every now and then. The small hatchling had no idea where her family was going, but she knew that she trusted them completely and they would keep her safe. It was a struggle for Yara to keep up. She couldn't help but notice that she was slower than her sibling, but that didn't stop her. She let out a few chirps and quickly sprinted forward. Hiding in a bush, she waits for her sister Scallop to come up from over the hill, prepared to call out and try to startle her. However, Scallop isn't amused by her sister's foolishness and continues walking, not even acknowledging her. This doesn't bother Yara, though. She happily continues to scamper around the leaf litter. get distracted by different sights and sounds, wanting and almost longing to go out and explore and see what they are, but having this deep down feeling of knowing she shouldn't.
Leaving the more dense forest, she was amazed to see such open plains. The grass there was so soft. Yaro playfully nips and leaps at her sister as they both tumble down the small hill. The hatchling is completely unaware of what danger follows until both of her parents stop. She suddenly realizes there are two other dinosaurs that look like her, both big and small. Startled but still curious, Yaro makes sure to keep close to her mother's legs while still peeking around and trying to get a better look at the strangers. This was the first time either of them had seen any other dinosaurs. Do all dinosaurs look like them? Loud roars from both the adult allosaurs could be heard back and forth. Their parents didn't want to challenge these two, simply passed through, but they were still on guard. However, Yaro had other ideas when she picked up on the very intense smell of meat. She immediately darted over, but her parents quickly scolded her. She felt her stomach grumble as she looked back at the meat, wondering why they couldn't just bite them for it. But, alas, she continued to follow after her parents. The rocky slopes were difficult for Yaro to climb. Her legs were already tired from all of the walking they had done. But her parents continued on. They would let out some small comforting calls to encourage the two of them to keep up. She notices that her father, Enno, keeps looking behind him, so she does the same. Not really sure why, but maybe he's worried about something? Dawn is careful to keep her footing as she coddles the hatchlings, making sure they don't fall. As hatchlings, they don't have to worry so much about falls, but as they grow older, they'll have to learn that one misstep could be the end of your life. Once at the top, Yaro cautiously walked over to something she had never seen before. They kind of looked like rocks, but they were brown and smelled of deep wood. Nervous and unsure, she lets out a few calls for help. Dawn quickly comes over to comfort her daughter, picking up the acorn and showing her that it's no harm. Yaro playfully picks up the acorn and runs around with it, even bringing one to her sister and playfully calling out.
she begins to wonder if there will ever be an end to this never ending hill, but she continues to walk on and make the best of it. Finally, there was some downhill. She ran as fast as she could, trying not to tumble, which turned out to be very smart on her end, as there was a cliff right in front of her. She slowed down and looked around for another way to get down to her father and sister, and the water. He was a smart father. The larger she became, the heavier she would become, and the more likely she would be to drown. Suddenly, an emotion of anger swelled through her as she yelled at her father before darting into the water anyways. Taking her time as Dawn watches over, she makes sure to get a nice little bath in. Leaving the water, she shakes the excess water off before slowly making her way over to her father and sister. The mud around this pond is quite slippery, and Yaro does slip into the deeper water, but thankfully she knows how to get out. Mimicking her father, she shakes off her body before quickly taking off after her family. She could tell this would probably be another long walk, but at least they were able to rest and hydrate. Dawn made sure that she was on the outside as they walked down some more narrow cliffs. Yaro couldn't help but just stop and look up at the sky sometimes. It was really beautiful, even though her sister would yell at her to hurry up. Thankfully, her ever-patient mother would stop every so many steps and wait for her to catch up. Something about this slope, however, gave her a bad feeling. However, with the encouragement of her mother, she swiftly made it down. It was a little hard for her to keep up, but thankfully most of it was downhill and 
She used her momentum to keep her going. After a playful sign of aggression and a jump, she seems to have hurt one of her legs, but only mildly. She might be over dramatic just a little bit. much better when she notices a small crevice that she can hide behind and attempt to scare her family. Ducking under her mother's tail, she tries to let out a large roar, but her father has already beat her to it. Yaro makes sure to let out a melody of high-pitched screeches to let her father know just how she feels about this. Suddenly, the hatchling spots water and begins to dart for it. Realizing there is a cliff and quite a drop below, she stops herself, just as Enno roars loudly for them to follow. As much as she wants to run to the water, she stays close to her parents. For now, that is. Noticing another entrance to the water, this one being noticeably less steep, she cries out to her mother, asking if she could go down. After a little protest and some motherly glares, she quickly scampers back up. Yes, finally! Eno had led them down a path to the water. Yaro couldn't wait to feel the cold water on her snout. However, she couldn't help but notice these weird stringy plants that would cling to her as she swam. She tried her best to shake them off.
Eventually, curiosity gave in and she took a bite out of this weird, slimy plant. And unfortunately, the taste was bitter and salty, spitting it out almost immediately. Entering an open grassy area, she could see her sister playing around in some flowers, and curious herself, she darted over. She watched as her sister would gently gobble up the flowers, seeming to make her feel better. She didn't really understand what her sister was doing, but decided to do it as well. Weirdly enough, the flowers did make her feel better, and even a little stronger as well. And so, of course, it became a race on who could get to the flower patch first and gobble up the most flowers. All while dawn, their mother was watching very close behind. Eno was scouting a little farther ahead, making sure that there was no danger that could possibly hurt his children. Yaro suddenly realized just how thirsty she was and darted straight to the water without thinking. Little did she realize that waiting for her downstream was a subadult Eo Triceratops. She immediately screams and scampers back to land while her parents leap into action. The now juvenile sisters are smart enough to know they need to find a bush for cover. They quickly hide and can only watch as their parents fight, hoping that they will be the winner in the end and maybe they will have something to eat.
Once it's safe, she quickly runs to her wounded father. They both made it. This was the first time they had eaten something fresh before. In the past, it had only been little tiny scraps of chewed up food, but now their father had ripped off quite a big chunk for the two sisters. Yara was a little suspicious at first, sniffing it and giving it a few nudges. She liked the smell of it, but wasn't too sure about the texture. Her father gently but firmly pushes her off the carcass, seeing as she does have her own scrap, but she still roars back. Suddenly, she takes off downstream, noticing the baby Eotrike is still wandering around, and she's quite bored. However, Dawn is quick to shoo her daughter back to the carcass. It's not safe for her to be picking fights with anybody. seeing Scallop eating her meat caused her to let out a very angry and territorial roar. And to her surprise, her sister let out one just as loud, if not louder. However, their father didn't let it go on for too much longer, unfortunately. Thank <laughs> you. 
The two sisters continue to pick up items around them and play in the river while their parents finish up drinking. The juvenile noticed that her sister would practice her dexterity on the seaweed, snapping her jaws open and closed as they danced around in the water. She did so as well, but tried to keep the bitter taste out of her mouth. There was much exploring to be done by the river, and she was having the time of her life. playfully dropping shells by her father before she would dart back over to the lake weed. Even though she was getting bigger every day, Eno still carefully got the plague weed for her and made sure she didn't get too deep into the water. The sisters squabbled over the last of the nearby lakeweed as their parents slowly lumbered back towards the fields. Yara let out a series of high-pitched no's, not wanting to leave the water just yet. But eventually she begrudgingly got out of the water and scampered close to her father. It's a good thing she did, because he wanted to show her something very important. He wanted to teach her how to mark territory with their claws. However, Yaro got a little too close watching, and well, he got her pretty good on the face, causing her to scream and Dawn to come racing over. Eno immediately became very submissive in posture, leaving and understanding that Dawn would be pretty upset with him for a while. Yaro continued to bleed out and cry out as Dawn approached to comfort her. Thank you.
the mother and daughter curling up in the meadow, enjoying the warm sun. That is until Eno appears and causes Yaro to jump up and alert, screaming before running off. Dawn is thankfully quick to put him in his place again. Eventually, Yaro softens up and lets her father get closer, all while her sister is out gobbling up all of the yummy flowers she notices and quickly darts in her direction. Looking over at a tree, she suddenly remembers what her father tried to teach her. So she thinks really hard about copying him, but doesn't quite understand yet. By the looks of it, it seems like this area is plenty safe for the two juveniles to continue to grow, learn, and explore, all while under the watchful eye of their parents, of course. As the sun begins to slowly set, the parents try to get their young ones to settle down, but Yaro simply can't stop finding more flowers.
Surprisingly, Yaro is the first to see the baby Triceratops again and lets out a loud squeak. Eno is the first to respond, letting out a very loud broadcast as he charges towards the small creature. She is old enough to realize that this is sad, but her and her family has to eat. sisters were getting closer and closer to adolescent, they still hesitated to run straight into the hunt and preferred to simply watch from afar. Eno poked his head out from over the side of the hill and let out a loud roar, letting the two know that the hunt was over and it was safe. Upon closer inspection, she realized that this dinosaur didn't taste like the one she had had before. It was a different one. Of course, this didn't stop her from getting her fill and enjoying her meal, even if she didn't hunt it herself. Yet again, while her family tries to settle down, she can't help but playfully throw some food at her sister before rumbling around and unable to pick a spot to settle. Eventually, her parents realize that she is not comfortable and lead her over to a soft bush. She happily curls up and sleeps for the rest of the night.
The night is more or less peaceful. Sounds and footsteps could be heard, but far enough away that their father didn't stir. As she laid there, she couldn't help but begin to wonder about her future. She realized that at a certain age, her parents would kick not only her, but her sister out. But thankfully, they were both still young, and she didn't have to worry about that yet. The daylight began to shine on them. Enno was the first to awaken. He wanted to make sure that there was nothing dangerous nearby before he would wake up the others and lead them down to the river. Yara was an incredibly deep sleeper and didn't even notice when her father left. She would enjoy sleep a little bit longer. With her family all up and about, they softly called at her to follow, and she stretched and shook her body before going to follow. Yarrow felt a sense of pride as she walked through the forest. Her father had done a good job of claiming this land, and her mother an even better job of making sure they all stayed safe. really was nothing quite like cool, refreshing water in the morning. She couldn't help wonder what was in store for today. Would they be sticking around the meadow or traveling downstream?
It seemed like she got her answer as Enno began to walk downstream. She was very interested in some bundles of twigs and branches that lined the riverbanks. While the rest of her family seemed to be more in a hurry and on a mission, she couldn't help but take her time and enjoy seeing her own reflection. Spotting another crevice, she quickly pushes her body up against it, waiting for her mother Dawn to turn around and wonder where she is, so hopefully she can let out a loud roar and practice her threatening stance. Yaro notices her sister sleeping and can't help but walk over and stare at her. Eventually it's enough to cause her sister to stir and angrily stomp away. Dawn, Anno, Scallop, and Yaro all stuck around this river as they slowly made their way down it for the next few days. The two sisters would continue to practice scratching their claws on the almost broken driftwood. With each new day that passes, the two sisters continue to grow. Unfortunately, this morning it seems like Yaro has lost her family. She frantically cries out, and when she doesn't hear anything back, scuttles into a nearby bush. Thankfully, Dad is nearby, and he quickly rescues her. He leads her back to the family so they can continue their journey. The parents have decided that it's probably best they continue traveling, letting their two children learn how to hunt through experience. Yaro can't help but playfully nip at her sister. However, Eno is not impressed and does not tolerate it. The two continue to growl and grumble over sticks, but their father makes sure nothing gets out of control. just like that, they were back at their safe lake. She really hoped today was the day they would go out a little further, but that's okay. Perhaps her parents knew that it wasn't necessarily safe for them yet. They were still quite young, and so far, thankfully, nothing around them had been overly hostile.
plenty of splashing can be heard as Yaro tosses around some of the lake weed, trying to fling some on her father. Dawn explains to the two that this will be their last day in the meadow, and tomorrow their long journey down the river will begin. Scallop has no problem exploring farther and farther out to find more and more flowers. While Yaro, on the other hand, would much rather stick closer to her parents. However, now that she's close to them, she can't help but notice them doing some weird dance, circling each other as her mother loudly roars and her father crouches over acting very submissive, but she can't be bothered with things like that or learning about stuff, so off she goes. lets out a loud roar to beckon both of the sisters closer. However, Scallop is too far away to hear or care, so Yaro makes it her business to go fetch her. Using her loud and high-pitched squeaks to herd her sister back, even though she was the shorter one, she was definitely the louder one and didn't mind throwing her weight around. After a few more mouthfuls of flowers, her parents grumbled that it was finally time to go for good, or at least for a very long time. Yaro takes in a deep breath. She wants to make sure she remembers what this comforting place smells like as the scene fades for now. <laughs> 